Okay, tell me, what do you usually do when they are very tired or totally not motivated students in your workshop? It is important for the students to understand the sense of the workshop, what does it mean for them and what am I learning and teaching them. Okay, and what do you do about um, disturbing and annoying students? Uh, the disturbing students usually have a lot of energy, so I kind of try to use them as much in my workshop as a participant. Okay, and what if you have um, really dominating students? A dominating student is a good thing in a workshop. How I can deal with it is that I make a rule of uh, just a hand up, so if somebody wants to say, say something, gets a hand up, and that's why he doesn't disturb the guys, they a little bit quieter. That sounds like a good idea. Um, what do you do when you like totally stuck in your presentation? Well, that could happen. We have to calm with that. So what I do, what is good to do is just maybe de de take a deep breath in, step back and, and rethink our aims of the workshop and redo maybe some questions and ask different questions, right? Okay, right. And what about if your structure you have in your head and maybe also on the paper is um, disturbed? Well, the structure, there are many factors that can actually change the structure. you got to be prepared for that as well before you start a workshop and you, you try to be flexible. So if something changes, don't get mad, just get back and be flexible. Maybe do something different, what you haven't planned, and improvise. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. So, hello students, welcome to my workshop, I <laughs> hope you will enjoy it, and yeah, well then, let's start. Don't do like that. Your body language is very important if you want to deliver a perfect workshop. You shouldn't give the impression you are unconfident, quiet and boring. There are ways to make students more open-minded, for example, you can play games. In the first half of your workshop, it is better to play games, to make them laugh, to have fun. In the second half of the workshop, it is good to be serious, to have a discussion, or whatever, just to make a serious thing. The reason for this is that when people laugh, when they have fun, they are more open to new ideas, new stuff. So, in the beginning, make something fun and then do something serious. So you will always need to deal with the room, how big is it, and what exercise do you will have. For example, if you want to have a group work, you can make chairs around the table and they can play easily to work for them. For example, for discussions on brainstorming, it's a good idea to put children in a circle that is easily to discuss and they feel more close to each other and have eye contact. How to succeed in your workshop? Start with a catchy introduction. Make sure they understand what you want from them. Wrap up your workshop and restate the message of your workshop. Thank them for their contribution. And remember to speak clearly, loudly, and don't rush. 